Hey lovelies, how are you doing today? I hope you're doing good. And this is one of our section again whereby I answer any of the frequently questions that is asked on my channel. So let's get right into it. I got one of the questions, I got this question from one of you guys. And basically she was asking me how is she going to scale up my changing recipe to be able to make for a thousand guests. And I thought that that was a brilliant question. And so I decided that instead of just answering randomly, we're just going to have an overview of how to do that on any recipes you see online, either on my channel or any other channel, as long as it has to do with pastries or baking in general. So what is this concept I'm talking about? I'm talking about Baker's Mathematics. And um, yeah, Mathematics is this game. It's not as complicated as it is or as it sounds, so don't worry about it. I'm just gonna give you an overview of what it is. So in simply put, when you're baking, the baker's math is like a language that is used to communicate between bakers. I'm in no way a professional baker. However, I've done my research and have learned this concept and I decided to teach it to you guys. So these are just formulas, like you have formulas in mathematics. These are formulas that is used in the baking world, which helps one to be very creative in making recipe. So you don't have to be stuck with someone's recipe. You can decide to either do like a, a more than what the person is doing in terms of servings or lesser the quantity, you know. So what is the importance of this baking maths? That it will help you to measure your ingredients um, correctly and accurately. You see me looking down on my daughter because I don't want to miss any point and I want to just stay on point. And it helps you to determine, you know, how much of any of the ingredients that you'll be needing. So it helps you to know the amount of milk that you'll be needing. It helps you to know the amount of nutmeg, um, salt and flour that you'll be needing for your recipe. It also helps you to convert recipes. So let's say for instance you're making the bread and you want to convert that bread from like a French bread to a um, sourdough bread. Now these two have different formulas like their hydration rate but don't let me start with that terminology. Let's just add slowly into it. So this in essence helps you to convert your French bread to your sourdough bread for example. What else does it do? It helps you to adjust your recipe. So let's say for instance, you, you have this recipe online that you got. You tried it for the first time and you find out that you probably didn't like the amount of sugar that was used. It was too sugary for you. Or you found out that, oh, you did not like the amount of um, fat or the moisture was too much or it wasn't crunchy enough or it was you know, too crunchy and all that. So these formulas will help you to adjust that recipe to your own taste. So it kind of gives you that creative um, um, leeway for you to be able to do whatever you want to do with your recipe. It also helps you to design your own recipe, still back on that adjusting the recipe. Because when you're able to adjust the recipe, you're able to now decide which recipe, which particular formula works for you. It helps you to kind of compare. So for instance, you try out my recipe for making donuts and then you, you try out another person's recipe for making donuts. And you decided that, oh, okay, I like a feature in this recipe as compared to this recipe. So when you look at two of those formulas, you'll be able to determine what is the difference between this recipe maker's formula and this other recipe for, um, baker's um, formula. So that's just what this baking mathematics does in essence. So in essence, it just gives you that creative mind for you to go out and conquer the world and do your own baking how you want to do it. So there are different um, forms of baking formulas. But before I proceed to this section, I would like to let you know that what it's like I said in my last frequently asked question said, it is better for you to use your weighing scale, which by the way, I kind of misspoke because I was referring to volume instead of um, metric weight when I was trying to explain myself in terms of, oh, you need to use a weighing scale because it's 
much more accurate than you using a cup which is the volume to measure so this Right, this baker's mathematics or formulas will be using the metric system because it's easier for you to be able to use a metric system rather than using it in volume. So baker's mathematics formulas include you can use the ratio and you can actually use the percentage. So you have the baker's ratio or the baker's percentage. You can either use this two. Also, there are some um, um you know day-to-day -day, um, formulas that you use like for example the temperature conversion so for instance you see somebody using um, Celsius you should be able to have a formula that will convert it to Fahrenheit if you're in the part of the world that deals with Fahrenheit instead of Celsius and also like volume and weight conversion just like I said previously it is best for me to use my metric weight but you do not see those metric weights always in recipes online so if you want to scale up or you want to scale down a particular recipe that you enjoyed when you made it it is best for you to first convert it into metric if it's in volume if it's in cups you have to convert it to grams for you to easily scale it up or scale it down much more better for you and easier and also of course costing so if somebody says it costs the person one dollar and you're in nigeria and it costs you you definitely need to convert the amount of a dollar to naira for you to be able to know the amount that you'd be required to be able to use to get that um, recipe down so in this episode i'm going to focus on using the ratio Baker's ratio. I'm going to explain Baker's ratio and in our next episode I'll be explaining Baker's percentage. So back to that question that was asked, this Baker's ratio can be used to formulate how much of all those ingredients you'll be using or you'll be needing to make for a thousand guests, 12 guests, 30 guests, name it. It gives you that, you know, that leeway. So for me to be able to explain this Baker's Ratio for you, here are some key notes that you need to put down in your jotter, which I do, even I still do it. Like I have my jotter and I have these few questions that I ask myself anytime I'm trying to convert a formula online or a recipe online. So anytime you hear me say formula, I'm referring to recipe. So that is the term that you hear most bakers in the professional world use to describe their recipe. They don't say recipe, they actually say formulas. So anytime you hear me say formula, I'm referring to recipe. So I still have that jottings whereby I go back to, because before I proceed with any recipe, of course, anytime I'm trying out a recipe and I see someone's recipe and I like what they've done, I make it that same way they made it as the first time and then I now become creative and decide on what I want to do with my own recipe so I still have these few things that you need to know so I'm going to read out some of them and explain as I go so for Baker's ratio first you need to find the total weight of the recipe you're trying to adjust or convert so if for instance the person just gave you flour is 220 um the weight of um fat is 29 salt is 18 blah 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 and the person doesn't give you the total weight it is your job to take a piece of paper and try to find out the total weight of whatever it is that that person made so you find the total weight of the recipe you're trying to adjust or convert Secondly, you need to find the total servings in the total weight of that recipe. So let's say when you made it, you made it the same way the person made it the first time. And you find out that you got like, because anytime someone's asking me servings and servings and servings, here is the thing to notice that my own servings might be different from your own serving, what you consider a serving. So you have to decide what your serving is and i'm just letting you know what these are the general things you need to consider if the person doesn't give you the weight of each servings in his own or our or in his or our own recipe so you have to figure out what is one serving for you 
and that is why I will stress it that when you're trying to adjust the recipe I recommend that you should first make that recipe in the original recipe that you found and love and from there if you decide that oh I love this recipe and I want to adjust it I want to increase the quantity or I want to decrease the quantity then you can go ahead and use this formula so the next thing you will need to find is the weight of each of these servings like I said sometimes you find formulas that gives you the total weight of the of the recipe give you the serving give you the weight of each of the serving you're lucky but you don't get lucky like that every time like on my own channel you don't I don't do that on my channel so this is the way for you for me to help teach you how to do this without me necessarily going back and I'm doing it for you so I'm teaching you how to fish I'm not just giving you the fish so you need to find the weight of each service which is you take the total weight of that original recipe and you divide it by the number of servings in that recipe so if that recipe says that the total weight is 500 and the person says that each of for that 500 it was able to make five servings so definitely the weight of one of the servings will be the 500 which is the total weight of that original recipe divided by five servings which will give you 100 gram so that means that each of that servings weighs about 100 gram then in your own mind you're going to determine or you're going to decide for yourself how many servings you want so do i want to make it 10 do i want to scale down and make it only two servings or do i want to scale it up and make it for 20 people 1000 people so and, and and so on so that is where you decide that's where your creativity comes in you have to decide how many servings you want after you've decided how many servings you want you go ahead and find the total weight of your own desired servings so you see we went from the total weight of the original recipe then we went down to how many servings are in that original recipe we went down to what is the weight of each of that servings and then we decided how many servings does Violet want to make. After deciding how many servings I want to make, I now have to decide this number of servings, how much will it weigh in total. So for you to find the, to the total weight of your desired servings, all you need to do is multiply your desired servings times the weight of each servings. That will give you the, total, the desired total weight. You go on also and then find the ratio. You decide what ratio will I need to be able to scale up this recipe or scale down this recipe. And the formula for that is simply dividing the original total weight by the desired total weight that you have now. So if I decided I want to make uh, a serving of 12, and the original recipe made a serving of 5, and my own total weight is 1,000, and the total weight of the original recipe was 500. So now for you to be able to calculate the ratio, I have to divide the 500 by, I have to divide 1000 by 500. That will give me approximately two. So that's the ratio. Once you have that ratio, you now use this ratio to multiply each of the ingredients uh, weight that the original recipe had. Once you have them up, then you have to cross check and make sure that you're on the right track sum everything up and make sure that it's equal to the desired um, um, baking seven weights that you calculated for yourself so enough of the talk we're going to go down to the um, studying table and I'll try to use one of my recipe to put all to apply all these key notes that I just mentioned and don't worry I'm going to paste each of these notes in the description section for you so you have that all you need to do is copy it out and paste it on your refrigerator or somewhere that you know that you can easily get to so let's get to the reading table and let me apply this to I think I'll apply it to my donuts 
on my channel. I'm going to apply it to the donuts on my channel. See you on the reading table.